Okay, let's start. Um, so thanks for joining. It's quite full audience. It's happy though the work for my presentation was not worthless. Perfect. Um, though the title you can see here is JavaScript where to start. Uh, the main idea behind this presentation today or that conference call is um, that I saw a lot of developers in my life and during my, during my projects around the entire world um, which were lost in the middle of nowhere in that JavaScript universe. They can jQuery a little and know about vanilla JavaScript and about a couple of other frameworks and libraries, but nobody knows, okay, what's JavaScript in general, where it comes from, how is it built and how you can use it for your project. Um, that's the main thing what we want to discuss today um, at a very, very high level. So we have just 50 minutes with questions an hour. Um, this is not plenty enough time to go in every single step really in deep. This is just a very high level. Um, so at the first, where's JavaScript come from? And the interesting thing um, I get asked quite any time at each conference, why is the name JavaScript so boring with Java and JavaScript? Is there anything together? Um, so and this is the, the slide here. JavaScript was built by Sun Microsystems in the 1995s at Netscape. Um, so in Sun Microsystem, which is basically Oracle today, um, is one of the main implementer of the language Java. Um, and there were the developer at Sun Microsystems in the early 95s, um, which was developing or creating the JavaScript scripting language um, at Netscape. So that's why JavaScript is called JavaScript, N not because it's linked to Java as a programming language, um, more because it's out of Sun Microsystems, which were the main maintainer of Java at that time. Um, so you know Netscape was transferred one time to Mozilla today and the other to AOL, I think. So in 1995, um, the the JavaScript language was transferred to the ECMA, the European Computer Manufacturers Association. Um, and this is today um, another confusing point because now you have JavaScript and ECMAScript. And there's a lot of discussions about it's the same, it's different, it's two different languages. Um, so in 1997, the first edition of the ECMA 262 was um, officially released. Um, and the main question is, what are the difference between ECMAScript in that different versions and JavaScript? Are they different? Are they the same? Um, so, and I think this is an, a, quite, a quite simple illustration. The ECMAScript 6 is more a standard or is a standard. Um, you have here a different, different versions and they are very interesting. The ECMAScript 3rd version, it's called the ECMAScript 3rd, um, was 99 and the next one was the version 5 officially released in 2009 so they were 10 years in between uh, which is in programming languages and computer scientists a very very long time 10 years um, the version 4 was under development and still in progress but they were never released to the to the public audience um, um, currently we are red, um, running on ECMAScript the 8th edition, which was last year in June officially um, released. Um, and the ECMAScript is a standard of a scripting language. It defines some rules, guidelines and details um, how to create a scripting language as JavaScript is one. Um, and if you find time to read the official um, ECMAScript standard, there's a PDF under, can uh, access this over the link on top here. Um, there is, um, at the, in the conformance, there are a couple of sentences and it starts all of the sentence, a conforming implementation of ECMAScript 6 must provide whatever. So, and that's exactly what it is. The ECMAScript is a scripting standard and JavaScript is a language which is built against the ECMAScript standard. So that means for you, you should notice that by reading the ECMAScript specification, you learn how to create a scripting language and by reading the JavaScript documentation, you can learn how to use JavaScript in general. So this is one important thing because the games, they will meet you across your developing process, ECMAScript and JavaScript. And why this is so important is um, 
there is an a table in the in the internet with uh, available under that link here where you can check if the <coughs> scripting or the the javascript integrator or the browsers are compatible with the newest ecmascript standards and that's an interesting thing if the ecmascript standard changes it take a couple of days or weeks until the javascript standard or the javascript language and the browsers are compatible with the ECMAScript standard. So that's why it's important to know the difference between. Um, and in that table, you can check which feature out of the ECMAScript standard is um, working in which different browser on the, on the right side. And it's available under that link here. So these are the main, main thing behind ECMAScript and JavaScript and how um, they work together. So now let's explore a little bit of the JavaScript. Um, so JavaScript can be used client-side as well as server-side. Um, the client-side JavaScript is what we know in our browsers. That means in the spider monkey or Reno, this is maintained by Mozilla. This is the JavaScript runtimes in our browser. And in that case, uh, Mozilla, the Google V8 is Chrome. And the, um, the Microsoft implementation is uh, Chakra. So, and the, on the other side, we have server-side implementations of JavaScript. Anybody know server-side applications running on JavaScript? Node. Node, for example, yes. A node is here running on the um, JavaScript engine of Chrome or of Google, the V8. So, but exactly what, what you told about, the, you can also implement JavaScript server-side. This is not only working in your browser. I saw a lot of programs and tools running on servers on an implementation of the JavaScript interpreter, in that case Node.js, for example. Um, then you can use the JavaScript syntax to write applications like a PHP application in general um, and running that server side. It's not only in the browser. So and then you have Reno and SpiderMonkey um, yeah, as well as on the client side, you can run that on the, on the server side. So this is also important. It's not only client, it's also server-side. There are a couple of things which are just working on client-side, but I will come to that point a little, a little later in my presentation. Um, so let's, let's go a little deeper. I think you can read it. Yes. Um, I mixed here the ECMAScript 5 and the ECMAScript 6 syntax in the presentation. Um, and there's one point... Um, I should, I should mention, um, the ECMAScript 6 standard, there are a couple of, are not fully compatible with all of the browsers around. That means if you want to try or write ECMAScript 6 JavaScript syntax, which is in general possible, um, you should think about to compile it with a compiler into ECMAScript 5, just to make it possible that all of the browsers out there can read your and understand your JavaScript. Um, but you can check that in that small, small, tiny table um, and check all the functions. And if you want <laughs> something to use, just check if this ECMAScript syntax is uh, used in the different browsers, um, then, you can, then you can use it. Um, so is anybody familiar with, with that thing here on the, on the left side? I think Karloff. So variable declaration is with var and then the variable name. Um, and uh, JavaScript has here a couple of different types. Um, I will come to that later. You have values, arrays, objects, and basically. Um, and the variable is here nothing more than a symbolic name of a specific value. Um, so here, for example, we have var as a keyword. So this is a reversed keyword you can't use uh, as, an, as a variable name. So you can't write var, var, whatever as well as you can't do that with a couple of other um, names and they are just reserved for JavaScript as keywords like variable declaration and stuff like that. So you have this one here, var x and x is one. Var x is the declaration of the variable and with x equals one, we assign a specific value to that variable and then we can print it out via console.log um, or alert. So then we can reassign the value. That means we can say x equals one dot zero can print it out and then you can see here um, on the on the right side the the debugging console in your browser um, there's also an interesting thing um, if you trying to develop JavaScript 
you should really know about the different types of debugging and uh, browser tools you can use. The simplest one is in Chrome or Firefox, the Firebug. Who is familiar with Firebug here? I think, yes, the most. Um, just press F12 and then you can, you can use it. And you have here a little console. And in that console, you can interact with your, with your JavaScript interpreter in your browser. That means you can use console.log instead of alert just to print it in the console. And it's also for you good because an alert is pop up to the user. You can see it and can click OK. That's a variable. Fine. Um, and the console log is more hidden for the normal end user. So, um, and the other thing you can see here is um, JavaScript is not type specific. If anybody here tried Java a couple of times, no? So in Java, it is, it is, Java is a language which is very type specific. If you want to create a variable for an integer, then the type of the variable should be an integer. If you later on want to assign a string to the variable from type integer, that will not gonna work. Um, and this is completely different here in JavaScript. You can create a variable with a keyword var and it's an X and assign first the value, which is an integer from zero or a double or float with 1.0. And later on, you can assign a string. It doesn't matter. So there are no types um, for the variables. That means you can just assign quite everything. And if you want that X is an array or an object later on, then you assign an object or an array to that variable first declared on top here. This is a good thing as well as a bad thing. So that's just that you know there's no type specific variables in JavaScript. Um, now we came to the new ES6 variable types, let and const. Anybody heard about that? Yeah. Perfect. So let and const become very popular um, during the ECMA 6 release. Um, and it makes it a little better to program JavaScript as an uh, from a developer perspective because in, with var you have a problem um, so let's do this we have here a variable declared with let l and it's a string then we can print it out it's fine and we can say l is let string changed and that works so we can we can uh, reassign and value to let during our uh, during our program but what is absolutely not allowed we are not allowed to redeclare the variable l in that case. So what working is with var you can do var x, x is one, and var x is a hello j and bion 2018. That will work with var. That will not gonna work with let. You can do let l equals let string, and then you can say l is let string changed. But you're not allowed to do let l let string change because the l with the type or with the keyword let is already um, is already declared. So this is one important thing you should know about. You are not allowed to redeclare a variable. You can reassign it, but you are not allowed to redeclare it. Um, the same th is with const, or in similar way, const is for constant. And what is the main idea behind a constant variable? It yes, it doesn't change during your entire program. That means you are allowed to do const c <coughs> equals constant. Then you can say console log c, which is an, just a print up of constant but you are not allowed to redeclare or reassign that value during your script. That means if you want something static, maybe a URL or an API key or whatever, you use const for that because then you will never ever have the possibility to change it during your, during your script. It is not allowed. So, that, so here you can see the, 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 the idea behind let and const instead of var is that you can write your code a little more with a higher quality so and, and be a little prepared for reassign variables and stuff like that so um so it's, it's really important let constant var and um, the the developer um of mozilla saying currently okay if, if you have an hierarchy about your variable declaration first is const because this is the, the smallest tidiest type of variable you can't reassign it you can't change the value this is the this is the closest type of variable we have currently. Then it's let, where you can change the value, but you can't reassign it or redeclare it. And var is you can reassign it and redeclare it. Um, 
another interesting thing in JavaScript are arrays. Um, who is familiar with arrays in PHP? Oh, the most, that's awesome. This makes it very easy. Uh, so in PHP, you have the possibility to use the keys with a value you want and the value, of course, with a value you want. That means if you want an array with a key of foo and a value of bar, that will work, right? With JavaScript, this is not possible. JavaScript arrays are at any time with a numerically index from zero to whatever. This is one of the, one of the things um, I saw many times where developer try to use arrays with named index and this is not working. So JavaScript arrays are at any time numerically indexed. There's no way to change that. It means arrays in JavaScript numerically indexed. So um, the syntax is here var or in that case let or const if you don't want to change the variable type or the, the, um, the values of that array you can use const or if you want to change that you can use let in, in that here. So that, my, that means you can, the, the syntax is that square brackets and then you just put the values in. Um, and as JavaScript is not type specific you can use any type you want. That means you can use in float or in double, you can use a string, boolean values, integer, whatever you want. Or you can use nested arrays, that means you have um, square brackets, um, then another square bracket, which is basically not nothing else than another array, um, comma separated, another array. So this is the way how in uh, JavaScript the array um, are working. Um, and there's one thing, I think it's not mentioned here on that slide, but I can, I can talk about it. Um, in JavaScript, we heard, we have types, values, and arrays and objects. And the arrays in JavaScript are basically objects. If you do the type of, in JavaScript you have a, you have a method, or you can use the word type of, and then you put in the array name, the variable primes, for example, and then you will see the example, the, the, um, the value is object. The returning value of the method is object because an array in JavaScript is an object. Um, but be prepared or aware for uh, using a syntax like var primes equals new array, round brackets, or put values in it. Um, the best practice to create arrays in JavaScript is with that syntax here. That means primes equals square brackets <coughs> and then put anything in you want. It's just for you as a reminder, don't use the, uh, um, the new syntax for an array. Just specify it like you see uh, here in that example. Um, so in that JavaScript using, uh, okay, this is the example with the type of, can anybody read it? Not really? Okay, so uh, we have an array, which is basically three, five, seven, whatever, and then you do type of, and then you see the returning value of type of is object. That means the array is a type object. Um, and the, see if, if this is a console log of, of that object, you can see what you can do with, the, with that object. It has a length object, and this is also very important. Each array has a length object. Anybody has an idea what the length object is, is representing? The number of elements. Yes, the length and the number of elements inside the array. So, and that means the, the arrays in JavaScript um, have in that case not fixed length. That means you can put as much values in it as you want and you can increase it, you can shrink it, you can delete values from it, you can push array values to that array um, and the length parameter is telling you okay what are the elements um, inside the array. So but there is one interesting thing I saw a couple of times. Um, if you're creating arrays and then trying to delete values out of the array then you maybe see that little funny thing that the index, that means the numerically index is not in an order anymore. That means be prepared for um, something in your code. It's like you have a numerically index zero with a value and then it's two and three and four and five and one is missing. Or be prepared that when you 
delete anything from the value side that the value is undefined and the index is still there. So just be prepared for that. It's, it's not like you have an array from 0 to 10, for example, so with 11 elements, and then you delete 2 and 3, and then you have an index of 1 or 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is not in order anymore. So you can sort it, and then all the undefined elements are at the, at the, at the, end, of the, um, at the end of the array. But if you're trying to access variables with an with a with a fixed index, that means you know the array has I don't know five elements, index zero to four, and you know the last one is that one you want, or the third one or the second one, and you want to to enter that element by typing your array name, and the square brackets, and then number four or three. Be prepared if anybody or you in your script it happens sometimes do anything with that array sort it or push it or delete values from it that the index is not sorted anymore. So that means it could be, it could be a trap. So just, you can loop over it. That means four, um, I can, I, I think I have it, I have it somewhere here. We can do this. Um, okay, let's do this. Um, little live presentation. I think that makes it more clear. I hate PowerPoint presentations. I'm not seeing anything. What's this? It will work. Perfect. So um, let's do this. If we have let as an as an array, which is more or less one, two, three, four, five. There you go. Um, then we you can use an, an loop over the array to print out anything. Um, so and it's it's like it's like uh, anything you know from other programming language. You have a for loop. You can say let e equals zero. Um, e is the array length operator, and uh, then you can use this. Oh no, oh, that one. Um, so just to make it sure or make it sure that you understand it, would be using const here. Good idea. Why not? It changes. It changed, right. So for a loop in a very in a, in, in a construct like this, const here for e would be a bad idea. Because then const e is zero, and here you try to modi modify the value of, of the of the index. And if it's const, you will receive an error. So and now you can do this console log in here or whatever and do console.log. Um, the array and then put an e in here so now you loop over the array no matter what index is 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 set over each over each element so this is this is one one uh, possibility how to uh, iterate over an array and get all the values out of it um, and if you have a nested array you can do this as many times as you want that means if you have an array and inside the array you have another array for example um, then you can do this for and do it the same in here with J or K or V or whatever. So just loop over the first one and then loop over the second one and the third one and the fourth one. And I think, yeah. It oh, perfect. So let's do this. So, oh, it's the other one. Oh, it's BB8. So this. Yep. So, um, a notice about variables and uh, arrays. JavaScript variables have no type association. That means you can assign that value you want. Strings, integer, double, float, arrays, object, whatever you want. Doesn't matter. Um, and arrays are always numerically indexed. There's no way to change this. No, never. <laughs> Let can be redeclared um, and cons can be reassigned. These are the one important things you should know about the new types of variables, let and const. 
Um, yeah, all the all the array stuff and variable stuff are a, a big big topic in JavaScript where you can I think talk about it less two or three hours. And there was just a short overview. I hope this makes a little clearer how that works. Um, the next interesting thing is objects and functions. Oh yeah, that works. Um, in this example, um, we will talk about the scoping and uh, hoisting functions in JavaScript, or that traps. Um, anybody heard about it? Okay, that's good. Um, so in C, for example, the programming language C, the variable declaration is based on scopes, and in JavaScript, it's based on function. What that means, I can e explain it to you here in that little example. The function-based scope in JavaScript means that the variable is visible inside my function, and in all nested functions, they are inside the current function. And this is also a very, very important thing when, when you um, declaring variables in a function or in a nested function. Uh, th this, this example, you have a variable scope, global scope, and then you have a function check scope. And here's a scope, check scope. And this is a very bad example um, how to program and a good example how um, the hoisting <coughs> is working in JavaScript or the, in the interpreter. Um, this will not gonna work. This example here, I'm showing with my mouth, you can see it. No. Where is, oh, I can do the, use this one. Laser pointer, that's it. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, um, so in that example here, you can see I used var for that, because with let, this will not kind of work anymore. This is one of the good thing with the new variable types. Um, so the hoisting in JavaScript means that it, it doesn't matter where in the, in the function you're declaring your variable, during the runtime, the JavaScript interpreter is putting all the declarations of your variable at the very top of the function. That means you can assign a value to a function, to a to an variable, scope, check scope, and the variable is declared here in your code. During the runtime in the JavaScript interpreter, var will be at the very top of the function because of the hoisting of JavaScript. This is one of the important thing you should know when you're writing code because I saw this with a with couple of other um, values, but in general with, with that, that a developer was 100% sure that if you're doing this scope, check scope, and var scope, then the variable is set to null or initialized or whatever. And this is, <laughs> this is not a way how to do this in JavaScript. The var scope in here is to, through the hosting um, functions in JavaScript moved to the very top of the function, and that means you can use scope here at the very top of the function and declare it, I don't know, anywhere else inside your function, not outside, because the scope is just function-based. But this is very, very dangerous. So a good example for you is if you have a function or a an, an, an block of JavaScript code, declare your variables always at the very first top of the function. Anything you need, scope, x, whatever, arrays, objects, declared at the top of the body because the JavaScript interpreter is all the, putting all that stuff at the very top of the function. And for your better understanding and for the readability of your program, just put it at the very top of the function. It's just a good practice for you. And it's a, a common, common use. It's how to declare variables in JavaScript, always on top of the function because they will be there anywhere. So, um, so and here we can see the scope is, is here set and the, declaration is should be here um, and then we have yes this is another example the nested example two here um, we have a test function and and var i equals o and o is the input parameter of the function um, and then i have here j equals o and then i do this and inside this if block um, i use the console log i and i see it's the same array um, as I pass here to the test function. This will not gonna work in C. If you do this in C and you're inside an if block, your variable i is just working inside the i and the if block, not outside. And this is how uh, JavaScript is working because it's function-based, we have a function test, we declare variable i at the very top of the function and can use it inside 
all nested functions, all if statements inside um, that function. That's why the console log E here is printing out the array um, we are imported here with the parameter O. That's how the nested function stuff is, is working with variable scope. Very important. Scope and hosting. Um, we have not enough time to explain hosting or the, the, uh, the idea behind the hoisting stuff and functional scoping in JavaScript in detail, but you should write it down and uh, check that out on your projects or keep it in mind that there is something like this, that all variables are moved to the top and all variables are in the scoping are function based. These are two, the, two main, the two main things. Um, so as we see here, uh, the functions are just parameterized scopes or blocks of JavaScript code we can invoke from anywhere else. That means here test run it, pass it in, in parameter to it, and then the code is executed inside the function. That's like any function uh, you can use in PHP or whatever. And this here is the new ES6 uh, a row function syntax. It's a little different from the, the old one here. Um, as you can see, there's no, I can see it. Um, there's, no, um, there's no function keyword anymore. It's just the returning value is ES6 scope equals and then the, in the brackets, this is for the input parameter, as well as here in the old syntax. Um, and then you can define <coughs> here uh, the, the code you want. So this is the new ES6 syntax, a row syntax of defining functions in JavaScript. It's a little different from the old one. Um, objects. <coughs> this is one of the important and interesting things in JavaScript because some people are kind of feared about objects, why ever. Um, let's make it clearer and after that session you will be not feared anymore about JavaScript objects, I'm pretty sure. Um, so objects in JavaScript are nearly anywhere. Arrays are objects. The date object are an object. The math things in JavaScript are objects. Strings in JavaScript are arrays and arrays are objects, so quite anything in JavaScript is an object. Um, um, you, can, you can create an object on a couple of different ways. First one is here, you can say, okay, const book, so that means you can't change it, it's for options maybe. If you have an option, an, 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 an object, where you can pass some or declare some options for an API call or whatever, you can use const options equals and then define any, anything you want and then you can make sure that nobody can change it during, during your uh, script execution. Um, so book is the name of that object equals and then you have these uh, uh, curly braces and then you can de define values, main title and the thing is here, the, this double dot, it's not an equal sign, it's a double dot in that case. That means main title, double dot, value key, value key value um, and you can also assign here objects inside an object. That means book is the, the, the top object and then you have a nested object author and the author has a first name, a last name, uh, not in price and not in currency, but okay, it's in here. So um, I'm for free, so zero, euro, perfect. Um, and you can define functions in here. That means a function would be print name, double dot function, return this last name, return and this uh, first name. Um, the this operator is th clear for anybody or should we talk about a little, okay, just one word about it. The this operator is used to get um, the current context of that method or that class you're in. That means if you type this point, then you can access the, the values uh, you have here, for example, last name, first name. Um, so this is one very, very common usage of objects in JavaScript. You will see this hundreds of times in a lot of scripts, because if you want to use an, not an array, but a key value store, where you say, I have a key with a specific name and I have a value for it, and in arrays you can't do it, what the other opportunity you can do is create an object of it. That means if you want, not a numerically indexed um, array, you can create an object from it.
but you ha you can't push or delete or do stuff like this with an with an object itself. This is our uh, methods from arrays. But you can you can for options is it a, a good thing? If you define options for API calls or for some AJAX requests or whatever, this is the common syntax to define options an options block. Um, the other option is you can use uh, the object create syntax here um, and there comes an interesting point the object prototype um, if you use an uh, an object in javascript um, which is i explain it in down here um, if you use an object in javascript the object has its own instance and a prototype instance and the prototype instance is the inst or is the is the object where the the current object is currently based on and this I will show I have an example on the next page where it makes what what makes that very clear um, so this is another way to create an object book is object create um, and as you can see here that's why I use that example uh, you can define here which um, value is writable and configurable and if it's writable false you can't change it during the it's like an it's like a const. It's like a single const variable in an object. That's how you can you, you can define it a little more granulated as in that in that part. Um, so this is the new ES6 um, a row function. Um, here we have function object created means I can inherit an object from another one, and this is the old syntax, and this is the new ES6 syntax. Um, and I have here an iBook, which is inherit from book, which is nothing else than create a new object iBook from the already existing object book. Um, and then I can maintain some uh, some titles. It mean iBook is the main title. Is it JavaScript at J and Beyond is awesome. And if I set the value here to writable is false, then I can't change it. So that's that's how I basically use uh, you can use the the objects here in JavaScript. So in the new ES6 syntax here, um, or the old, already the old one, um, with that you can use the prototype objects. If you want to use in JavaScript a prototype object, um, you need to have a constructor for it. The example we saw on the previous page, there were no ex constructors. There was just an object with not without an without a defined prototype. Um, this is an example, an old example with ES5, um, how to build a constructor. That means function book is title, publisher, author, price, currency. Um, and the constructor is just like an, an instantiation method for creating an object. So this is the, the description of the object. Um, this is the old one. This is the new ES6 syntax. Um, and the main difference here is that in the ES6 you have the keyword class and this is not available in ES5 so if you have something with class book whatever this is ES6 syntax but this is uh, really a thing you should recompile with Babel for example to ES5 because uh, the most browsers in for example the Internet Explorer 9 or 8 and 9 and I think also 10 are not familiar with the class thing it's only edge currently I think I'm not 100% sure but I think it's, it's like this um, so and you can use here class book constructor and then you can do pretty much the same um, as here so and what is the prototype thing it's it's become clearer down here book dot prototype dot language is English so as you can see here there is no space or no value or variable declared for language it's not in here so I can use the prototype to set a language English and every other objects which are um, uh, based on the book constructor have this English um, language in place without I can't so I, I do not need to modify the book object itself but I can I can change the prototype and set additional features to it that means languages um, or other functions and methods 
um, and then I can I can use it. For example, here I can set a new method to the book object, uh, print price, um, and then if I using here new book for example, um, I'm able to use the language. I can see the language English, and I have the opportunity to use print price the method just because I set it to the prototype object. So and that's the way how to um, change the behavior of some objects during the runtime. Just edit the prototype object. Um, so with the ES6, I did that here. That means in the class book ES6, there's no, there's no language. Or the, we changed the title because here the title was um, book two, for example. Um, and in the um, and then I, here you can see the book two is, is up here. So we have the title book two through the constructor. And then I set the prototype title to new title. And then I can use it here with prototype.title to, to um, access the, the prototype variable. This is more or less like an, a construction plan for that object um, where you can use the, the prototype object. But a little, a little. So this is the the, Engl the English example you can see here. The book two has no language in place, but we did it with the um, with the prototype thing here. So that means after the the creation of the object with the new keyword and the constructor, I can use book two dot language to receive the language um, out of the prototype. But um, there's one thing you should know about the prototype is a standard thing of each JavaScript object, but please only modify your own custom objects. Don't modify prob um, property objects from the DOM, for example, or from da datum or math or whatever. Don't do this. I saw that in my life twice and it was a horrible mess because just think about in an, in a minimized JavaScript, anybody changed a property value of a standard JavaScript object and this returns an error that nothing in your JavaScript code works as you expect. In, in, not in, in Internet Explorer, not in Chrome, not in Firefox, nowhere. Because you are overriding the standard of JavaScript. This is never a good idea. Don't do this anytime. You can use prototypes on your own project and, and objects, but Please do not overwrite um, properties of the uh, standard jQuery or JavaScript objects. Um, so for your notice, JavaScript is function-based. That means the declaration of the variables are in the function top. Um, and you can use it through the whole function in each nested function. Um, remember the hosting. That means please declare variables at the top of the function, each one. Um, the object prototypes need the keywords new and constructor. That means if you want to use this prototype thing, you need to create this constructor function we saw on the previous page with function, book, equals, uh, braces, parameters, whatever. And you need to create an object instance with let book equals new book with the parameters. Just with these two things, you can use the properties. Uh, the, the prototype, the keyword new and the constructor this is also important. Um, and use object.prototype only on your own objects. Don't do anything with object.property on standard JavaScript objects. It's not a good idea. So um, now we come into the, I think, the interesting part, the client side. Um, the document object <coughs> model, um, I think it, somebody heard of it, pretty sure. Um, the document object model is here, um, like a tree, and it's a standard how to get change, add or delete HTML elements through JavaScript. <coughs> um, and the, H, the DOM is like in JavaScript API to HTML and XML files. Um, it's, as you can see here, it starts with a document. The document is that page which returned from the server. Um, then you have a root element, HTML. I think this, is the, this structure is familiar to anybody. HTML, head, body, title. And you have elements inside your body, which is a link and span, a paragraph, an image, a list, 
uh, an image list, whatever. So this is this is familiar quite with with anybody. Um, this is the description of how Mozilla described the document object model. Um, as we said, it's like an API that represents the interface from JavaScript to an HTML or XML document. Um, and an interesting thing here is that the document is created as a node tree. That means you can you can you have the, the, the root level and then you can it's like a folder structure. You can click. You can click and make it um, go to to each element. Uh, we can show we can have a look on that in the browser in a couple of in a couple of minutes. So a node element is inside the, inside the HTML code like this. You have an P tag and then class editor whatever some text and the closing. This is this represents one node element inside the the document object model inside the document. And of course, if you have some diff containers above or some sections, sites, whatever, um, this node element is a child element of the section or the diff or the site. So this is how the the DOM is is um, created. But we can we can have a look on that on the debugging console in the browser in a couple of minutes, as well as you can have a look on your own website just with the developer tools um, in your browser. Just hit F12, go to the console or the in the Firebug you have a special extend and special, I think it's an, it's just a setting where you can enable the DOM browser. Just click it, you can, you can do that uh, together. And then you can see the whole DOM which is rendered, the whole object which is uh, created out of your current document. It's very interesting. So um, this is this is uh, in the debugging console, just the output of the object document. If you type document, hit enter, um, this is the object which is representing the current HTML document which is loaded on your, um, uh, yeah, on your in your browser. Um, and this is, for example, um, a syntax where you can just set an, an object reference to a specific element, node element inside your website. For example, document get element by class names or ID. Um, an interesting thing here is if you, I think you can read it, it's, it's named get elements by class name and there is another function called get element by ID. So that means if you're creating websites, I saw that also a couple of times, don't do an ID on an element twice. It's not the idea behind an ID. That's why get element by ID means if you have an ID in your website, for example, it's, it's, an, it's, an, ID, it's an ID editor and you have an element which, in, which has the ID element and in the middle of the page there's another element with the ID element or editor and at the very bottom is again an element with the ID editor. If you're doing it with JavaScript, get element by ID editor and press enter. What do you think will, will be the, the result of that of that query? Get the last one. Uh, the last one? First one? First one? <laughs> it's the very first one. The JavaScript is going through the it's 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 uh, synchron, that means it started at the very top of the document, going through all the list and get element by ID means the first one I found should be the right one because an ID should never come up twice in one document. That means get element by ID means if you declare it once, third, four, five times in one document, you will get only the representative of the first element in your document. Also a thing you should be aware of. With classes, if you have an, an P element, which class editor, then you can use that multiple times. But this is exact what here, what's, what JavaScript wants from you, get elements by class name. Elements, it's more than just one. It can be one, but it can also be two, 100, 200, just 10, whatever. So what is, the, what is the returning value of get element by class names or ID? What would you expect? Node list. Node list? It's a node, yes, a node list and, and therefore an array. So that means you can loop up over over the over the elements, um, so what we can I have an example where you can do this in in real life um, here. 
So that means be aware with the get element by ID thing and get element by class name things. So this was a couple of problems in my life. So that's just make sure, um, yeah. And if you have these, if you have found the element by class names or by ID, uh, then you can work with it like any other JavaScript object. Then you can use the whole dumb JavaScript API to modify that, um, to modify that object. You can change the text size, the color, you can make it disappear, set the, the hidden attribute to it, display, none or block, whatever. So this is one example. I have it in, 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 in the web storm also, so we can have a look on it um, in here. Let me see when I do it. Duplicate. You see it now? Yes. Um, exit. Where is the DOM basic example? There you go. So there's one interesting thing um, here. So we have a P class, let's do this, presentation mode. Um, so that means we have the P class, edit a node, edit a node, edit a node two, edit a node, edit a node. My cat is grumpy, is still grumpy, is my dog is very grumpy and my cat is very still grumpy and cat not grumpy anymore. So um, if we're doing this, the document, so, this is a thing I, I need to um, explain in a couple of minutes, but here is the, param the, the P array. That means get elements by class name, edit a node. We receive one, two, three, four entries, and then we can loop over it and do here and click event listener to that, to that specific paragraph. So what will happen, I click on it with the mouse and then the text color is now red. go so um, boom um, console I can click on it my cat is very grumpy and dog has no event listener because it's not the class editor it's editor node 2 so and I can click on it and if you see this is the event there's also an object in JavaScript which is very important to you each click event mouse over whatever raises an event and you should always put or use this event here as an input parameter for the function because that event is very, very helpful because without the event, you have no idea on which element the user was or user clicked um, to raise that click listener on a list of 100 elements. So that's why event target style dot color dot equals red is, is working here because of that event. So this is one important thing. Um, so this is not working because this is not the this is not the uh, it's not the right class name. Um, so at the very end of the presentation right now, uh, I want to talk about uh, here the document event listener doom content loaded. Um, that means that this script here, this block is executed when the DOM, the document is fully completely loaded. If we do um, just the function here without the event listener doom content loaded the script or the, the website with the javascript in place will be rendered and loaded and rendered that means the javascript event listener here the p array is get element by class name from a document which is not fully loaded that means it's pretty sure that the javascript will not find any classes with the editor node. That means the array will be empty. I saw that also a couple of times. So document at event listener doom content loaded function is you can load the document, you can render the document and execute this JavaScript right after the document is fully loaded. Because then you are sure all p tags are in place are rendered, are loaded, and then you can say, okay, what are my p, p elements? What are my p arrays inside inside my document? Um, another another um, new way to do this um, is this why I use this. 
Um, so if you can place JavaScript code inside your templates or inside your inside your HTML files, you're luckily you can do this. Um, but sometimes it it turned out that you are just can or you you want to Im import a script which is not inside your HTML but it's it's outside. You can see this is the same function, right? Uh, view uh, presentation mode. This is the same function we saw just in an external JavaScript file, not inside HTML. So, and what, what will happen when we change right now the website, let me do this, save it. What will happen is that the document is loaded. Per default, all the scripts here are loaded synchronously. That means they are executed right after they are loaded. So now I change the, the the thing here. Okay, now I press F5. Hmm. So what's wrong? The function is there. Okay. And my elements are there. Okay. So is the function called? Hmm. Let's have a look. Hmm. Function is called but my click listener is still not working. So the problem is that you load the JavaScript synchronously. It means it is loaded and executed in, in a synchronous way. That means before the document is fully loaded, that means the JavaScript here has no idea about your P tags here. You have it now two possibilities. You can do this. Let's do the presentation mode again. So you can you can move the script from the very top to the very bottom. Oh, that's working. So you can do this. But sometimes this is not possible because you just can add scripts at the top of the page, maybe with a plugin or whatever. So the other thing you can do is leave it where it was and use here. Um, Defer or async. Those are also two new features. Defer means, um, I have a presentation for that. Let me do this. So now it's at the very top and it's working because of that keyword. And what that means, there no okay let's do this double gate yeah, yeah so what that means is um the standard race sync that means html is parsed from the from the from the server the script is fetched, the script is executed, and then the HTML um, parsing is or continues. And during the script fetch and script execution, the interesting thing is that the HTML parsing is paused. And that's the interesting thing. Why, If you put in JavaScript on the top of the page with synchronous loading, <laughs> you will not have the, the chance that these JavaScript will see any time the, the elements uh, which are rendered or loaded um, after the script was included in your site. Um, another option is async. That means the script is fetched from the server, but uh, it's executed after it's completely, it, it's fetched. And during the fetch time, the HTML parsing goes on. It's a little better, but if you really want to make sure that the script is loaded, but it's just uh, executed after the document is fully loaded, you should use defer. That means the HTML parsing process completed. During the parsing, you fetch all the JavaScript sites or files from the from the server, um, and right after the HTML parsing is is done or finished, then you s execute the scripts in the in the order you're included at the top. That means the first script is executed first, the second, second, the third, third, and that's exactly what we uh, what we did here. So that means the whole website is loaded from the servers, parsed, 
the script is loaded as well, but it's not executed. And after the document loaded completely, we execute the content of dever.js. So and that makes sure that we can access the variables or the, the elements which we defined here and modify it in our JavaScript. So in the async attribute as well as the deferred attribute are um, widely used in, in, the, in, in the browsers. So that's, that's why uh, they, they should work in the new ones. Um, one book I'm really, I'm, I, it's, it's, it's a really good one. And if, if you want to do more with JavaScript, um, you give it a try. It's the uh, defined guide um, about JavaScript. You can find it easily on Amazon. Um, because this covers the most core syntax and the core features of JavaScript. They are just, it's, it's around 700 pages, I think. Um, and there are just a hundred of jQuery or 50 or 80 or stuff like that. So not much. And all the rest is plain JavaScript, basic explanation about JavaScript language. Um, so there are questions about, um, if not have a safe travel back home. Um, thanks for joining so far. Okay, so it's a uh, let variable can be redeclared using it in a loop uh, for is allowed. You will redeclare the variable in each irritation. Um, it's, it's based on what we see here. So that means if you're, uh, there's no name who asked that. Okay. Okay. Um, so you can redeclare a let variable inside a loop, and then it's re. Uh, it's define first the variable over the loop, and then you can. Yes, because yes. You, yes, reassign it. But if you want to, if you try to redeclare it, um, functions. Why? Redeclaring makes no sense. Redeclaring in a loop makes no sense, right? Yes. So. Redeclaring, you can you can reassign a new value, but redeclaring makes no sense in a loop, right? Exactly what I said. You can't really you can't really declare a variable with let. It's not possible. Should avoid it. Of course, you should avoid redeclaring variables anytime. So that's yes. that makes that makes real no sense. So it means let and, and redeclare of let is as an I know today not possible in JavaScript. It makes no sense, right? So if you but if you have a nested loop, you're right. A loop in a loop. Yeah. The the inner loop would be would be called upon multiple times. Yep. So Okay, let's count as, as redeclaring, or, or is it just for, for each instance of that loop? Now, if you, if, you, if you think about the function scope of JavaScript, then it's inside a function, and the variable is visible inside the function and all nested functions, and the loop is just an, an, an inner part of an, of, an, of an function. Yeah, but, but that itself is, is not... Is not uh, so, but why would you... The, the thing no, is... No, no, no. I, th I think the question was, that if you have two loops and, and the, the inner loop has has the, the counter declared as, as let in yeah. the bar, does that work or does that fail? The, the scope changes. So the moment the scope is finished, then and you get a new yeah. scope, yeah. you can really care about yeah. okay. reduce use yeah. the variable. Other questions? Let and var has also different scopes, right? What 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 do you mean with have different scopes? Uh, that was my that uh, if you have a let declared uh, within a loop, and then when you no, I think I just answered my own question <laughs> because you said it's all based on the function scope. Yeah. And once um, you're outside the function, the let has no doesn't exist anymore. Right, because the f in in that case but if the. I use a var, and I'm outside of that function, it's still there. Uh, nope. Nope, okay. 
the for the for is in that case your function. That's it. So that means if we are using here for um, and that we let e as an index equals zero um, until e or li uh, is the array dot length. Um, and then we do this. Now we can go, we can iterate over our array. That means console.log um, array dot this. Oh, no, this. I think it says array length instead of length. Um, so. so this is functions. Can you see it? Yep. Where is it? Oh, no, that's not. Okay. So, um, where is. I want to present anything. So, I don't know. And you used left instead of length. Yeah. Sorry? It says left instead of length behind the R dot in the for statement. Mm. Oh, yeah, this oh, line 16. Let, let. R left, left. Oh, it's not going to work. Oh, that's so now we have here one, two, three, four. Yeah. Here. Um, so and you mean if I put yeah that, that if I if I use here console dot log and e e is not defined because this is my function the function scope of 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 uh, of my variable i is now if I use here var the thing is if if I put in here var um, then the variable here is redeclared and that's why it's called it's one but it's not one because e is in that case four you know what i mean yeah that's false and that's why it's always very 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 dangerous to do stuff like this because here you can use let but the best way don't use var Never, yes, in, the, in, in your practice right now, use let and const because var is, you can do with var, you can anything, reassign it, recall it, redeclare it, and but with. Let is in there of person number five. ECMAScript five? Yes. And the let is not there yet. Uh, ECMA six is let and const, exactly. right. But you can use Babel, for example, and yeah, recompile your code from ES6 to ES5 and then include it in your project. But var is very dangerous in that case because of, of the scoping and the hoisting of, of JavaScript. Because if you were thinking, okay, I want to know how many interests I do inside my loop and use var e equals one equals zero and do here equal uh, console log e, this is not what you expect. So and that's why var is, is here. Um, the, the, problem is not, the problem is not that var and let make makes it, in that case, a better program itself. The, the good thing is that with let, the compiler and the interpreter knows, okay, let and const are different from var, and you are not, a and here now you can say, okay, you have a reference error because e is not defined. Yeah, so that's actually what I meant, with the different scope between let and Yes, var. yes. <coughs> and that makes it a little, a little better for you because now it's an error instead of a false value. Protected against yourself. Yes, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> 